star Victoria Jackson, and many more. Welcome back to 2010 to our broadcast here, our little old broadcast. It's called Troopathon, and I am Melanie Morgan. Uh, I'm a talk show host and executive producer of this broadcast and, and, and proud patriotic American. I'm joined today by Andrew Breitbart of all the, the bigs. All the big sites. Big Hollywood, big piece, uh, Breitbart.com, Breitbart.tv. You've got a million of them, and you've got a huge heart, as well as Mark Williams, talk show host extraordinaire. Um, we have so many people who have been on our program today, and now we are very proud to introduce the host of the Man Call Radio Experience based in Chicago, syndicated across the United States by Talk Radio Network, my uh, former uh, syndicator as well, Eric Man Call Muller, joining us live by phone. Good afternoon, Eric. Wow. Wow, is right. We are so proud and thrilled and honored to have you on our broadcast. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be here. You guys are doing a great thing, and, and uh, you know, Melanie, I love you, and, and Breitbart is, uh, Breitbart's changing the world. He certainly is. Let's hear a little Thank applause you. for that. If, has, if, has anybody seen how Mancow does his show? Do you remember the, in the, his underwear? the movie Fame and the Bruno, how he used to play two keyboards at the same oh, yeah. time? I got, when I was 10 years old, I go, how does Bruno play two keyboards at one time? And that is how Mancow does his show. He's... I, I'm gonna, what's a euphemism for a freak of nature? It is, uh, he produces it, he plays two keyboards at the same time. But I want to ask you a question, uh, Man Cow, yeah. and you're about my age, and I think I was a testosterone-drace, joke-driven person between 9-11. I don't think I had 12 serious thoughts before I was 30 years old. And then 9-11 happened, and I watched how Mancow has transformed himself Absolutely. from being a joker, a troublemaker, a guy who shut down the, 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 the I believe it was the, the Bay Bridge, the Bay the Bay Bridge, Bridge. In, in, in San Francisco to one of the most steadfast supporters of the troops at wartime. What happened? Well, first of all, I'm, I, I think of myself more as Coco for fame. I, I often like to dance on taxi cabs. And, you know, of course, the, the, uh, the Muslim taxi cab drivers in Chicago, they just laugh. So if you're ever in Chicago, just jump up on their cars and dance like fame. They love it. <laughs> you, you know, look, I, I do it, I guess, the way South Park does it. I, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's sneaky conservatism. It's, um, yeah, it's, look, it's common sense. And what happened to me on 9-11, I worked in the, at the time, in the Kennedy-owned World Trade Center. Chicago had one, too. They evacuated the building. The city was in chaos. We thought the Sears Tower was coming down. I mean, you know, nine years later, it, it seems, uh, maybe it seems a little crazy in, in the rearview mirror, but uh, we, we, you know, the sky was falling. Planes were dropping. And I decided to stay on the air. I was also on the Fox News Channel in the second plane hit. And, uh, you know, nonsense didn't, didn't cut it anymore. I just didn't want to go back in the next day and just get the radio show. And, and I, I really decided on that day uh, that I wanted to do something. And it's real simple. I wanted to do good. And I know that sounds... Uh, probably stupid to many people, but in a country right now where, and certainly a city here in Obama's uh, neighborhood, sure nobody's even trying. So it's amazing when you just try, if you just try to go out into the world and do good, the reaction is, is unbelievable. Uh, uh, you know, a groundswell of hate, a groundswell of evil. Um, if you try to do good in this world, you're going you're gonna to feel it, but it's much more rewarding. So, so yeah, 9-11 changed me, and certainly having kids changed me. And, uh, and it, yeah, absolutely right, Mark. Well, uh, Eric, I know that, um, that you have talked extensively about um, service and sacrifice of our soldiers uh, overseas, uh, and that's what this whole show is all about. And, I, and, you know, I can't say enough about these guys, and I know that you can't either. Well, I've broadcast from bases. I've been to the Middle East. Uh, the sacrifice is unbelievable. I, I uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what the tone is of the show here, so I don't want to get you in trouble or me in trouble, but uh, I, wish, I wish we'd let the guys win. I think the troops know what to do, and, and we could win these things. Uh, but I think, much like I saw in Chicago, we, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of politicians messing things up, a lot of gridlock, I, a lot of... Uh, well, look, look at the way they're, they're handling the golf, for okay. instance. Okay. Where there is no leadership, and where there is no vision, people perish. And I just really wish they'd let our soldiers do what they do best. But God, I love them, and I support them, and, and our listeners support them. And, and uh, we talk about it on a daily basis. I, I just wish, you know, we got the, great, the greatest fighting force on the planet Earth, and I... I wish we'd let them do the magic that they do. 
thank you very much for joining us. I know that you have a really short time window here available, and we can't uh, tell you how much we appreciate your appearance today. Eric Mancal Muller, ladies and gentlemen, awesome. The guy is awesome. It, it's almost worth a donation to hear a man cow say, I don't want to say something to get me in trouble. I know.